Today's adventure begins here in Celebration, Florida. As the recording of this, it is Sunday, April 23rd, 2023. The roads are closed because each and every Sunday, they block off Market Street for a little, I'm gonna call it a flea market. It's more of like an art market and fruit stand and farmer's market. They do that here each and every Sunday. I will not be partaking of this too much today. In fact, I am making an impulsive trip over to St. Pete only because I had a plan to go over to Orlampa, which is halfway between Orlando and Tampa, to an attraction that is never, when I say never, I should say rarely open. Fantasy of Flight, and then from there, I'm gonna pop over and watch the third game of the White Sox Rays series. But it's not, I'm not gonna put much baseball footage in today. It's gonna be mostly about Fantasy of Flight, which I am surprised is open. It was open yesterday and today. It's very rare that they open their doors. I'm gonna go check it out. I've been wanting to for a while. There's been times it's been closed for like a year or two at a time, and then they're like reopen and open back up for like a month or two, and then be closed for six months. And from what I was reading, they were open yesterday and today from 11 to 3. Oop, it's 10.25 right now, so by the time I get over there, it should be 11. And they're open the rest of this month only on the weekends for four hours a day. And then after that, they're going to be closed till the end of June. So I got to hit it up. Welcome, everyone. Adam the Woo here. My voice is still just a little bit hoarse from screaming and yelling from a walk-off home run that the Rays got two nights ago. I did not go to the game yesterday. They walked it off again, and they are undefeated at home. So if it kind of gets eventful towards the end of the game, we'll pull the camera out and film a little bit towards the end of the game today. But it's not going to be a baseball vlog, as stated, but I'll pepper it in at the end. So if you only want to see baseball, skip to the end. If you don't want to see baseball, don't watch the end. I'm inviting you to join me, shall you? I really love living down here. They just really have a good community aspect. Always doing events. Look at this little dog walking around down here. All right, must fuel before making the commute. Same price as it was the other day, three seventy-seven a gallon. And I also, I also got a water here for the road. I don't know if there's any calories in this. This is a mountain water, Art Deco, Seven Eleven. And this is always a little backed up through here, I-4 westbound, but not too bad at this hour on a Sunday. Also, I've done six days at the gym. Been feeling pretty good the last couple. You want to follow along with my weight loss and treadmill journey, I post stories on Instagram, Adam the Woo ATW on Instagram. Adam the Woo ATW on Instagram. I'll, I'll, I post every time I'm on the treadmill to keep myself accountable if you're interested. It's a little bit of a backup up here, but once I get past Mickey Power Pole and Champions Gate exit, it clears up a little bit. I feel like it'll be smooth sailing over to Fantasy of Flight, and then hopefully, because less traffic on a Sunday, should be able to get it a drop time for first pitch. It'll be, it'll be close though. Some sirens coming by. I don't know, Big the Foot, your guess is good as mine, what that sign says. It's covered up. Have veered off I-4. Little RV park up here and a water tower, checkerboarded water tower up there. Evidently, the guy that owns this property has a lot of land out here. Wonder if he'll be here today. That'd be cool. And I'm not the only one arriving. Fantasy of flight. We are the past. I like history. I like nostalgia, and I like the past. That big bunker over there. Okay, I always like these. These remind me of like old Route 66 or roadside style, where they have the words along the side of the road. From high, I can see it already from here, to low. Lookouts. It's gonna probably say below. Ah, there's birds going by too. How fitting. Well, uh, from what I was reading, there's a lot of facilities out here, and the only one that's open is this big bunker right here. 
there's probably like six other cars. It opened at 11, it is 11.18 at the moment. But you can see there's a lot more down that way that's all blocked off. Look at this thing. Right next to the parking area. A 1957 Lockheed Constellation L1649 Starliner. This was the state-of-the-art transatlantic airliner from the beginning of the jet age, just what that sign says. And as it states right there on the side, Orlampa, because it's halfway between Orlando and Tampa, where east meets the west. Going in. This state's active runway. I don't know if planes take off and land from here at the moment. Wow, look over there. I don't think that's part of the open facility. But maybe it is, or maybe it's going to open. I saw a couple of the a couple of videos of the guy that owned this place. And he was saying originally when he opened it, he wanted it to be like a, a bustling tourist destination. And even said that in the future he would like it to, to be that. But as of right now. It's just going off what I was reading also in interviews. But as of right now, occasionally opened is this building. When I say occasionally, it's pretty dang rare. I've passed by this so many times and it's always closed. Now this even has a sweet art deco look. I always kind of refer to this as like old Hollywood style. It's not really Hollywood, but Hollywood has a lot of art deco because I lived at Hollywood Boulevard for a couple years. It all, this, this Art Deco style always reminds me of Hollywood. That's what I refer to as Art Deco and also Hollywood style. They're calling it the world's greatest aircraft collection. All right, I have walked in. This is the gift shop in here. Oh yeah, take a look. Orlampa, right here. I like this. All of life is a school. That is really... That's a good shirt. I might have to buy a t-shirt from here. I might have to go. That's a, I like that. I like that. City of Orlampa. Yeah, I'm going to grab that shirt on the way out. Okay. This is the guy that owns the place here. Kermit Weeks is his name. Right here, Kermit Weeks. Oh man, I love that they're really promoting the Orlampa. That's great. Might have to get a stick of that. So. There's a little sculpture here. A winged guy with this fantasy of flight. And this is their logo. Their statement, we are the past, we are the present. And they are the future. That shirt's great too. Look at that. <laughs> All right, I am in here. There is the the Creeps a Mighty Third Major George E. Preedy. Oh, these fans are the same ones that they have at Indiana Jones St Stunt Spectacular. They have an interesting name. They have an inter interesting name, the company that makes those. This is an I, Tommy, and of course it says you're not supposed to touch anything. So I will not be touching, and I like this. They do guided tours, but I think the guided tour is gonna be a little time consuming. Just because I, two minutes for the guided tour. But I asked the cashier up front if I could just go around on my own accord. She said, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. Just go around, take your own photos. You're free to take photos, you're free to take videos in here. I would like to come back one day and meet Kermit Weeks, I believe his last name is. I would like to meet him and possibly have him show me around, but I don't know, I don't know if he ever does, if he ever does anything like that where he kind of shows people around. I don't even know if he's ever really here that often. North American P-51C, the Ina. Make, Macon Bell. 
Orlando Air Force Base. Take a look at this. This is the Orlando Air Force Base antique vehicle. This Cadillac. Little caddy here. This is pretty awesome. This is some relics of the past. Look at this. Really amazing. An old Navy plane, number five, right there. And not just the not just the airplanes, but a lot of engines, like a Packard A2150 V12, water-cooled engine, one built by Jesse Vincent, chief engineer of Packard after World War One. Packard used the Liberty as a starting point for the A1500. I don't know a lot about engines. That's why I'm really glad that a lot of places will kind of share info like this. You know, life's about learning. You just want to kind of learn as you go, even if it's something you're not like completely knowledgeable about. It's great that places like this exist. And kind of share history. And out here it says no access. But for a long time, you couldn't even peek in here. This door was not even open. You drove down I-4. The Savoia Marchetti. This is very interesting. So you have the propeller up here. You have the wings across. And then you have the pilot and possibly co-pilot or person riding along in the little section there at the, the front, down below. The American Aeronautical Corporation, the AAC. Okay, here's a little bit more info. It was one of six built under license for the U.S. used by the New York, the NYC Police Department during prohibition to intercept run smugglers Wow. Now that's pretty interesting. Imagine you're a rum smuggler in New York and this thing comes swooping down out of the sky. I mean, they're probably just using it for like aerial views to like see what's going on, but how would that work? Like uh, pointing out being like, you're get, you got the rum, get him, get him boys. The B24J Liberator. It was designed for the replacement as the B17 Flying Fortress. Incredible. I love the style of these. You know, it kind of has that classic vibe. Like, I like looking at classic cars, and I like classic planes. I mean, that is pretty dang good to look at. That's some good eye candy right there. And it wasn't that much to get in here. It was like 12 or 13 bucks with tax and all that. So really the price, not too bad to do a guided tour, which probably as you go along will take a considerable portion of time to be walked around and, and shared the info with each one. Probably we'll get some nuggets of info that they don't share on here. Maybe I'll go over there and catch a little bit of info, but I am definitely more of a self-guided kind of guy and you can see those people over a lot of people doing the self-guided as opposed to the guided tour just like I am this is look at this thing this is really incredible these antique airplanes there's a little tiny one down there as well it's like a tinier version of the 711 Sarah. As stated on the side there, the 711 Sarah, and it is fairly obvious with the do not touch, but they have re-signified and reiterated themselves. Do not touch this and do not turn this propeller. As tempting as it is to just grab that thing and give it a pull, because I think I've seen movies. You start some of these, probably not this one, but some of the older aircraft, you pull it, you start it up that way. You would. You would, you would go over here, you would grab the propeller, get it going. I've seen TV shows and films. Now this one has to, appears to have a grasshopper on the side. This is the Grumman F3, F2. 
a Grumman biplane, the last in the line of Grumman biplanes. And I do believe that is an insect of some sort. Let me zoom in. Grasshopper with a hat? This is just the shell. It's made out of wood. A Lockheed Vega. The Vega was the 72nd to be purchased by Lockheed. Painted in the scheme of the original Winnie May. Is that the same? Am I looking at the same thing? Here's some of Kermit's comments. When I acquired this aircraft, and I haven't flown in years, it needed to be looked at. I don't think that that is what I'm looking at. Or maybe this is the shell of it? It might just be the shell of it. There's another wooden plane over there. I'm going to take a look at that. This one has the insignia on the side, the can, well not the insignia, that's the insignia. What I'm referring to is the candy clipper logo up top. A lot of them have nicknames. This one is the candy clipper. I always like the artwork that are on the side. This is called the Grumman Duck. First in a long line of seaplanes. Okay, this is a seaplane. As you can see, it almost has like a boat-like area here. You know, when I think of seaplanes, I think of the Waterworld Stunt Show at Universal Hollywood where the seaplane kind of blasts over the top. This is, this is kind of that version of it. You know, similar, a seaplane is a seaplane, but that's what it reminds me of. There's another little tinier version here. Now this one's called the Winston Churchill. It's got a bullseye on it. The Spitfire. I mean, pretty much that whole thing, except the engine, is made completely out of wood. Obviously, the engine isn't. And the tires aren't. Here's some of the specs on it. Year built was originally 1917, reproduction in 2000. And who knows? Wingspan of 43 feet, 6 inches. Top speed of 128 miles per hour. Weighing in at 3,500 pounds. Imagine flying in a big piece of wood. The GB Super Sport Setter. This one, which I showed a minute ago, is powered by Wasp. And not only are they the full-size planes, but there's also little models up top, little miniature versions, like maybe one-eighth scale or one-tenth scale, some sort of a scale. A good view right there in the middle of the doorway of that water tower. It's kind of silhouetted, silhouetted out in here because it's so bright outside and a little shaded in here, but as I turn the camera, it kind of comes more into light. So this one has some of the specs on the back wing. Empty, 866 pounds. Pilot weighs 170. I weigh a little bit more than that. I don't know if I'll ever get down to 170. I think I weighed 170 when I was a teenager.
And I was really way too skinny for my height at 6'3". This has two birds on the side of it. Skyways Incorporated, Skyways Inc. Number 400, a layered super solution. National air races with this racer. Nineteen thirty one. And the wing underneath is like blocking all of it. I mean it's like this would provide a lot of shade outside. There's even a Jeep in here. Look at this thing, it's like something out of Star Wars. I picture Skywalker in that thing. Now it appears as if all of these you are allowed to get in. I know because there's a family behind me and they are in, they're in another one taking photos. So evidently all of these are able to be gotten inside of in fact, an attraction on a higher plane, there's even a little, there's even a little walk up here. You see over there, there's people inside that one. So I am just assuming that this one, this one, and those two are for tourists to sit inside of. So I'm gonna take the helm down here. I'm gonna take the helm. This is what it's like. This is what it would be like to be in the cockpit, looking out. All the gears, nose up, elevation tab, nose right, could be turned by this. The ignition switch here. Park, and then you got the, I guess, Break or I don't know what those are. Usually I have my aviators on, but I haven't worn glasses in like a week. I broke the last pair and I haven't rebought them. But I feel like Tom Cruise in here if I had my aviators. Call me Maverick or Adam the Woo, either one. Now I flew in a plane about this size once years ago. Myself and Tim Tracker went up with a, a friend of his who's a pilot, went over Magic Kingdom. We're pretty dang close to Magic Kingdom in a three man plane. They sat up front. I sat in the back, and let me tell you, it was a little scary being in a plane this small. I was pretty frightened. I didn't really, I, but I did it. Faced my fears, but it was really, yeah, it was about the size of the size of this. Of course, there was a tail on it. Oh, I like this one. Miss Los Angeles. Number 33. Also nicknamed Missy. Ah, this is not an original. This is a replica built by Bill Turner. Renowned replica of the golden age of racers. And this was featured in that book, All of Life is a School. According to this, it holds the record for inverted speed record. This, look at this one next to it. Massive. Massive. I mean, I fly a lot on commercial planes, and that, that is, pales in comparison size wide to a commercial plane, but just seeing this up close inside this hangar. It really is pretty, pretty amazing. Number 39, there it is right there. Pilot Harold Newman and Ike in 1935. This is Ike. A lot to see in here. A lot more than I was expecting. I thought there was gonna be a couple planes. Just, I mean, I can't imagine what else is hiding on this property. Ooh, is this like, you think this is all the ones, like notches? You know, some people put like notches on their bed, po bed posts. <laughs> you think this is what kind of this is? This is all the different planes? I don't know, maybe. 
fertile myrtle. Yeah, so I guess the notches on the bed, po bed post wasn't a bad analogy. And this is another one that you can walk up. And take a peek inside. Awesome. Awesome. This kind of reminds me when I went to the valley years ago, my mom and I went to the Reagan Museum, the library, and they have Air Force One in there. And you can go up and look into where the pilots were in Air Force One. That's another really great museum. Just to see Air Force One like that is just really cool. I'm gonna say, if anyone's in the area and they are interested in antique vehicles or aircraft or both, I highly recommend this place for just a little above ten dollars twelve dollars with tax if it's on the weekend and they're open obviously check their the interwebs check out their site make sure they're open and if they are just swing in you don't have to do the guided tour even if you're just going from tampa to orlando or lampa which is where this is located just stop in for a little bit an hour browse around and just support a place that's really cool like this pretty pretty interesting and it's right off of interstate right off of i4 so it's just like two minutes off of the off of the for the main freeway it's a cool place classic car oh look at this roosevelt for president that sticker's still on there For me, obviously the you know the, the building of these planes, just like the style, the antiqueness of them is awesome. But I really like you know the artwork on the sides. For me, like the the, Kurt, the Curtis Robin over there, I just like the artwork. It kind of it kind of adds to it for me. This is interesting too. The little like bubbles here on the front where the blade there goes around that's kind of unique this is also interesting this is an old bicycle notice it has Kermit's last name Weeks Air Museum TKW possibly the old name before it was Fantasy of Flight it was the Weeks Air Museum or he had a different location before he moved here Either way, this is an old bicycle. I bet Kermit was probably riding around on that thing at one point. It almost looks like a, I'll call it a Zamboni, but it looks like one of those things. You know when you go to a convention and you park a long way away and then someone rides up, a guy rides up on a bike and says, hey, you want to ride? It's like five bucks to jump in the back. A rickshaw. That's what I'm thinking of. It looks like a rickshaw. It's like a, a rickshaw of sorts. This one's very shiny. And take a look down here. There actually is some oil dripping out down from the oil and coolant drain. You know, I really, as I look at it and think about it a little more in all seriousness, I think what those are, are captures or destroys there's, there's tanks on the side of that here on the side of the Winston Churchill. There's like a rooster right there on the side. I believe that's what that is. After they accomplish, accomplish taking one, they'll mark it and paint it on the side. plane that this is in front of is named after Mage, Major George Preedy. Well, this is him right here. He's got a bust after himself. One of the top 10 aces. Well, actually, no, he's not in the top 10 ace. I don't see him on there. But he was a complete fighter pilot. And the 
P probably represents his last name, Preeti, and his name is also inscribed on the side, Major George. Okay, back in the gift shop now. Look at some of these stuffed items that are here. There's the ostrich that I saw in there. This kind of reminds me of Cars, right? Doesn't that kind of remind me? Wasn't there a Planes movie? I think there was a plane. I never saw it, but I saw Cars. I think there was a Planes also. That's what that reminds me of. I wonder if there's any tie-in. Probably not. All right, I was gonna get that shirt up there, the All the Life is a School Z. But the only sizes they have in the blue, I like the blue, is 2X. So I don't know if I want to get the 2X. I mean, I guess I could, but it'd be like really baggy. I'm trying to try to slim down to an X. So I don't know if I'm going to get that, but I do really like this shirt a lot. Maybe if I come back at another point, they'll, they'll have it. I like the ostrich one too. I like that, I like that green. Now I've heard this phrase, but I've never heard it with might. I've always heard it with loose links. Loose lips sink ships, but this is this is giving kind of a eh, maybe it will maybe maybe loose lips won't sink ships. They might, they may or may not. They, eh, you just never know. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's a good phrase not to have loose lips. I'm gonna you know, keep all your business or someone else's business to yourself. Mind your own P's and Q's. Mind your own beeswax. That's what they're trying to say. Oh, what the heck? Don't worry, be naked. And bumper stickers here. Oh, I like this. God is my co-pilot. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Born to fly. I do want to buy some stuff, obviously, to support the places I visit. And they have pins in here. So I'm gonna get that bumper sticker and I'm gonna get this pin. That is six bucks. Take the bumper sticker. This is a or Lampa pin there. It's upside down. Bumper sticker was two twenty-five. So I'm gonna get a couple things. Pretty dang awesome. Yeah, that's the two items I got, and they gave me a bag. I got a pin. Didn't have the shirt size I wanted, but I would have probably bought that shirt. And I four is just right over there, so I'm gonna get back on I four. I think I'm just barely gonna make it for first pitch if traffic is good. And over here in the parking lot, check out this classic car alert. Very nice. Riding in style, got the windows down. It's called the Judge. There's a little inscription down here next to the tires. Very nice. Again, highly recommend stopping in here. I was in there about an hour. You don't want to do the guided tour, you don't have to do the guided tour, but there's a lot to see. I am so glad that was open. I've been wanting to go in there for a long time. I think I went in there about six or seven years ago. And I it's been so long I didn't even remember it. And since I've wanted to go back, it wasn't open. So I am so glad they were open today. It is a rare occasion. for traffic not being kind through this section. It does give me a chance, however, to just slowly crawl by this boat that's off to the side of the road. This boat, I guess it used to be an old restaurant right off the off-ramp here before Dinosaur World. It's all tagged up, spray-painted, but it's an old boat. Been there forever, as far back as I can remember. And next to the boat, it's like a big bowl. Okay, I got parking over here. It was ten dollars, which isn't too bad. The shop's only been only been charging twenty, but I grabbed this spot. And probably a good thing I did because I don't even think I could have gone that way. I hit a bad wreck once I got into the St. Pete area, and it really helped me out. First pitch just happened, so I'll probably get in there by. Started at the end of the first, start of the second. I'm not sure why they got this closed off to park at the regular area for Tropicana. Oh yeah, off on the horizon. It's like a beacon. Oh, it looks like it might be dog day at the field today. Sometimes they let people bring their pets in and sit in certain areas. It's also very foreign for me not to get here two hours before first pitch, but I have things to do. 
had to hit the gym first off, which I am not neglecting to do every day. I'm trying to keep, get that habit going back up. And then also fantasy of flight. And traffic does not help at all. They have the best record in baseball right now, 18 and three. 13, I believe 13 of those games have been here at home. They have not lost at home yet so far this season. And if they win this game, they will have swept the White Sox with it, as well as every other team they played at home so far this year. Getting that sweep. All right, Chris from Aimless Adventures has arrived also. Are you ready for this uh, for this sweep of the Sox? This house, this could be a house sweep at this moment. There's a lot of them that's happened here so far this year. Undefeated at home, let's do it. <laughs> All right, arriving at the top of the second inning. It is a pretty good crowd in here, look at this. That was just a strikeout. Sure. What do you think the healthiest, lowest calorie one would be if you had to choose? I think I always go with the grilled chicken. Grilled chicken? But if you think there's something else that'd be like on par, it's the same on both sides. I don't know, but I think chicken would probably be. Yeah, I am way too excited about eating these now. I think if I probably didn't get the sauce on it, it'd probably be a little. A little less, but this is what the insides look like here. Like there's some tomatoes, some onions, some sauce, some chicken. You got the same thing, right? I did. This is my first party with this place. It's also another MLB record for the Rays. Pete Fairbanks has the longest hitless streak in baseball right now. So as if they don't need You know what the Rays need to do? Play some real teams. That's what everyone keeps telling me. Either that or either that or, or all the teams in MLB aren't that good this year. Oh! 
this shirt too but I think I'm gonna hold off on buying any t-shirts see how this whole weight loss thing goes but I did get another hat because you know the last thing I need are more raise caps but I'm doing it and I also got this one too and I, well I'm gonna buy this one too because I don't have a purple full purple one so I'm going with two two caps for this sweep and this historic season all right heading out you're welcome. Back in my car now, a couple blocks away from the stadium. This is a pretty interesting mural. You got Castle Grayskull there, you got Planet of the Apes, you got Jurassic Park, and around the corner, looks like there's He-Man and a Gremlin and Aliens. Go over here. Yeah, He-Man here. And then there's a Sphinx with Homer's face on it. Gremlin down here, an alien right there. And little monsters? A little monster. Since I'm already over in this area, I traversed a very short commute, I don't know, like 10 miles north of where I just was, to Safety Harbor. I've never been to Safety Harbor. Evidently, there's a pier over there somewhere and some boats. It is 5 15 right now, and I 4. Even on a Sunday, it gets a little backed up, so. Just gonna see what's around these parts before getting over back onto I-4. And then heading home for the evening. Safety Harbor, Florida. They have a clock here as well. Safety Harbor Boat Club. Man, this is a peaceful little town, little area. And the thing that was amazing is this parking lot that's right here. It wasn't paid parking. You just—I was like, oh, I might have to probably pay a meter or something. Nope, just just park like a normal place. You're in St. Pete by the Trop. It's tough to find parking. Everything's meter parking or lot parking. All these boats. Another boat there. Some canoes over here. All right, I'm taking a long walk on a not so short pier. Not off the pier, but to the end of the pier. So Tampa's over there and St. Pete is over there. You can see both of them. And you can see that seagull in the same frame. Tampa. St. Pete. Not far away from where I just was on the corner of 12th and 3rd Street North. It's like a very unique looking car over there, like a bug over there that's all decorated a plenty. There's also a smiley face in that yard. And then here's some cut down bamboo and someone backing up. Here's a bottle tree. It's like different, it's like a milk bottle tree or like a juice bottle tree. That's interesting. It's not glass bottles like I've seen. There's the glass bottles. And this says, please take one. So I took one and it actually is an attraction called Whimsy Land, located at 1206 Third Street in North Safety Harbor, Florida. Whimsy Land. Who knew? There is a keyboard on the side of that door right there. And this looks like something Wayne Zielinski would drive. T 
two Mardi Gras heads there with beads and whatnot. This is a private residence, but they open it up to anybody to walk through. Like people can just walk through here. You got the flamingos down here. You got the bowling balls. It is a public place. There's a tiki over there. There's SpongeBob. This place is awesome. Greetings from Whimsyland. And they also have some items that you can buy here. Some postcards for five dollars. This little carriage, which is not for sale, but there's a lot of stuff on the look at this troll up here. Dangling from the roof, all the different chandeliers and whatnot. Yeah, I love bottle trees. Reminds me of Route 66. You see a lot of bottle trees. So that's the private residence there, so you're not allowed to go past there. I think you could just even hang out in here if you wanted to just relax. Like a little shrine of some sort. A wind chime made out of kitchen utensils, cutlery. Yeah, I love tiki's. All right, going through the woods here. It's like something you'd see like in a McDonald's ball pit or something down there. this thing. It's like an old trash can or something that's been painted into artwork. It looks like a dog with his tongue out. And down here is like a spider made out of chains. Handprints probably from the residents that created this place. Oh more from the ball pit. Now this is an interesting character. It's got the big webbed feet. And this is the face. A bowling ball, a bowling ball pyramid over here. And that's kind of the end of it through here, but... Some of the other neighbors have gotten kind of artsy too and put stuff in their yards. Oh, there's a peace sign too, I missed that. And then up on the balcony, some different items. The birds chirping. There's a dragonfly of some sort. Okay, this is pretty cool. So here are some roadside attractions all across the US. For example, Watts Tower, which is in Watts, California, near LA, 2,548 miles. The Giant's House, 8,200. The Orange Show, I've been to that in Houston, that is 1,000 miles away. So they are paying kind of like homage and honoring some of the other kind of wacky roadside places that are similar to kind of how those started off, kind of how this is. Now these are like some bottle tops or some like Tupperware, not a Tupperware, maybe Rubbermaid tops. Kind of dangling here too. But yeah, you can just see quite a few people are just kind of wandering around. Taking a look at this odd roadside. Yeah, speaking of Mickey D's, there you go, right there. There's like the old Mickey D play area section. This is directly across the street. This is the neighbor's house. They got a couple like Olmec heads down there. 
another peace sign. And here's something very, very peculiar. There's a Dalmatian over here who's a firefighter next to the fire hydrant. Looks like it's made out of metal. Probably has the ax because he doesn't want any other dogs coming up here on his territory and utilizing his fire hydrant that he has probably marked his territory with. Stay away, other dogs. Stay away. This neighbor's yard over here has kind of like there's an artist in Philadelphia who's very famous all through like South Street and whatnot that does this kind of glass artwork. Kind of looks like that Philadelphia artist snot, but it looks similar to kind of the stuff that he has done. A block or two away from the house. This kind of reminds me of like the old punk rock days when you get like a fanzine inside like an old newspaper thing and they would reconvert it. Owned by the same people, I am now entering an art zone. And there's a big pink elephant right here. But they do different events. Right through here too as well. Oh, look at that old classic car over there. That old station wagon. Like they're doing some kind of buzz sawing up here. Oh, just to like hypnotize you. And here was more glass work all along the side, the side of here, all the way up. Kind of hard to see, but it's all glass artwork. And here's another bug. They had a couple, couple different bugs. There's a better view of that all glassed up building there. Underneath this big tree, there's a chandelier dangling from the tree full of moss. Actually, there's a bunch of different chandeliers like that. Yep. Doing a little work over here. Open heart, open mind. Dance your own dance. I don't know who, who that is, but pretty cool. And they have a little library of sorts where you leave a book, take a book, leave books or take books, or both. Oh, there's a payphone booth. Look at that. Skeleton and shell of a payphone booth over there. Can leave a love letter, write one, or read one. Maybe you want to read one from this very creepy bunny-headed doll. All right, I'm now over in the downtown area of Safety Harbor, a couple blocks from where I just was. Look at this very unique building over here with the very interesting front with the glass and all that. And as the sun starts to set, you see a little sunburst there. There is a, a Esperu, S by Rutu water. So I'm just gonna assume that this was bottled and made here, this mineral spring water. Also, I ended up getting a piping hot caffeinated beverage. I was getting pretty tired, so I needed a, needed a coffee. Pike's Place, one raw sugar, not regular sugar, just one packet and just a little bit of cream, cream, but that's about it. Not that, not that much. And there's little placards around town too, let you know some of the historic stuff. The historic tree, the Baranoff Oak Tree. This must be Baranoff there, yes. Salem Baranoff, former owner of the Safety Harbor Spa. He was born in 1880. And he purchased land for the new library, which is right next to this tree. So they named this tree after him. And this thing is very impressive. Look at this thing. Big old tree. And the library's right over there. Oh, that bird is laughing at me. Must know I'm not a local. And the library's not open today. Well, because it's getting later in the evening, but also it's Sunday, it's a recording of this. But also, the library was built on the former side of the Hipkin House in one of the five Safety Harbor Mineral Springs, the water from the spring was used for drinking by local residents. But take a look at this. This is the water pump. Is this still working? Oh, they got it sealed up. That's one of the original water springs right down there below. And there's a lot of trees through here. I mean, just look at all this. Just big, expansive trees. This oak was grew, grown on an Indian ceremonial shell mound. The shell was later removed 
and as the road-based material for the local streets leaving the space beneath the tree is estimated to be over 200 years old. So maybe that would be the hole under the tree there where the shells were? Interesting. Did not start the day off thinking I was going to be looking at trees, but here I am. This artist, Adam Danger Smith, has depicted very caffeinated or maybe uncaffeinated raccoon on a flamingo. Looks like there was a chalk walk out here. A butterfly there. Looks like, like a roach made of chalk. Finally pulling back into celebration now. There's a really bad wreck on I-4 and it completely rerouted me to a bunch of back roads through Champions Gate and then back onto I-4 that wasn't backed up. And now I'm back over into celebration. And that's gonna do it for today. Back where I started so many hours later. See you in the next video. The vlog is over.